Hey, how are you doing today? Ready for the next class? Ready for the next class? Okay, today we have to check. First thing we have to do is check our guide. And it says that we are going to work. Let me see. I'm going to talk about prepositions of place. We already know what a preposition is because we have learned it on the previous uh, video on our previous class, but we talk about prepositions of time. Now, it's quite the same thing, the prepositions, but they're gonna be focused on places, not on time. So it says we're gonna be working on page 352 and 353. Those are the pages that we are going to be working. So please grab your books and open them, page 352 or 353, actually 352. Um, let me go to the book. Okay, here we are. Do you have the book on this page? If you don't have the book, you can just follow me here on the screen. And the title says, just let me get another color. This one will be better. Prepositions of place. Now, what's a preposition? Remember, preposition is a word that tells us when, where, and how something happens okay um for example um mi casa está en la quinta avenida en that's a preposition it tells me where exactly en la quinta avenida um for example yo estoy en mi clase estoy en mi clase en es a preposition en español en mi clase O tú estás en el hospital general. So in Spanish, it's going to be the same way. You will always say en. Sorry. We always say en. Yeah? En mi clase, en la quinta avenida, en el hospital general. But in English, we have a difference. Because we don't say the same word for all of them, okay? We used to change them because basically, si estoy en la quinta avenida, si estoy en la calle, estoy en la cuarta calle, si estoy en la esquina, si estoy en la izquierda, a la derecha, we're going to say on. That's the rule, okay? I am on Fifth Avenue. Si hablamos de una calle, de un lugar donde estemos sobre algo, we always say on. I'm on Fifth Avenue. I'm on the corner. I'm on the left. Okay, I'm on the roof, so the techo. But the second example I used was in mi clase. In this case, since we are inside a space, we're going to say in. It's easy to remember because pasa que a veces, ay, como se usaba on, el in y el at me confunde. No, it's easy. On, whenever we are sobre algo. In, dentro de algo. Okay, in. And what's the difference? Because usted dijo, teacher, in para la clase, pero en el hospital va a cambiar. Yes, at General Hospital. Y aquí voy a hacer una pausa. I'm going to make a pause right here. Why did I say in the classroom and I say at the General Hospital si en las dos estoy dentro de un lugar? This is the difference. In is going to be only for closed spaces inside another space like for example in the kitchen in my room in the living room in the bathroom in the dining room okay dentro pero no voy a decir i am at the kitchen at the bathroom at my room no at is only going to be for public places okay and in for inner spaces, okay? But I can also use in for public places. I can say I am in the hospital. Let's say the hotel. It's shorter, easier to write it. I am in the hotel or I am at 
the hotel. For public place, for public places, you can use both. Okay? Se pueden usar los dos para lugares públicos. In the hotel, at the hotel. But if I am, for example, in the hotel Marriott. No estoy en cualquier hotel. Tiene nombre. Estoy en el hotel um, Lakes, Miami Lakes. Estoy en el hotel uh, Radisson. Estoy en el hotel Four Seasons. Esos que dije tienen nombre. They have a proper name. So in that, in those cases, you must use, let me get another color to show you this. You must, uh, and I want a thicker marker. I must say at, okay? I am at Marriott Hotel, for example. I am at Four Seasons Hotel. I am at General Hospital, okay? I'm not gonna write the whole word because it takes me a lot of work doing this. But whenever we go and say, Public places with a proper name, it has to be at Marriott Hotel, at General Hospital. Not in the General Hospital or not in the Marriott Hotel. So it's not that complicated. It's just a matter of memorizing. On, sobre algo, in, dentro de algo. Puede ser público o un lugar privado, in the kitchen, in the park. Ok, pero at, uli, únicamente para lugares públicos. At the park, at the hotel, at the bank, or I can say in the bank, in the park, in the hotel. But at, only, only, only at can be used when the public place has its proper name. Ok, so I hope you got this information clear in your mind, and let's continue. Let's continue reading what you have in your textbook. We have here in, in the box, on, on the box, you see, I was talking in, adentro de, let me get another brighter color, maybe this will help us find, in, ahí está, adentro de la caja, on, Sobre la caja. Now we have a different one here. Let me erase this. Above. This is a new one. This is a different one. Above means um, sobre algo. There's a space right here. Está encima de algo. In front. Frente de la caja. Now across. Give me one second. Across is del otro lado. I can say across the street. Ya, este está del otro de la calle de este. So, I can say across the street or on the opposite, opposite side, en el lado opuesto. Under, este era above, ¿se recuerdan? Está por encima de la caja. This is above, debajo de la caja. Now, behind, behind we say when it's detrás, between... Probably, I don't have to explain this in Spanish, but between, entre, o en medio de, next to, it's when you're a la par de alguien, o a la par de algo. I'm next to my uh, little fellow right here. You can see it, right? I'm next to Elmo, yes, next to me, a la par de él. Okay? Um, and the last one, near, Cerca. Near is almost as next, but cerca. All right, kids. So you must learn these vocabulary words. That's what you need to do. You must rem memorize them. Because if you want to speak English, you must know your vocabulary. It's not only the grammar. You need to have vocabulary. Because otherwise, how are you going to be able to express yourselves? So special note says right here, a special note about the use of at as a preposition of place. Mm, the brown, the browns are at 
the theater. They are watching a play. The Browns is the last name of a family. Son los Browns, los Lopez, los Morales, los Winter, okay? The Browns are at the theater. You see que es, es un lugar público, it's a public place. That's why we can say at. I bought these candies at the supermarket. Vieron, el supermarket is a public place as well. You can say at. It's only 11 a.m. George is still at the gym, another public place. So he didn't say in the gym, in the supermarket, in the theater, but it can be, okay? <clears throat> now, um, let me see, let me get my pointer back. Sorry, kids. So I had a cup of tea at Jennifer's house. Okay, we also use at for a person's house or apartment. Uh, in this case, it's Jennifer's house. Cuando es la casa de alguien, dice ahí, also we use for a person's house or apartment. Si es la casa de alguien, también decimos el at, okay? Um, sorry, I'm going in Spanish, but I don't want you to finish this class without, not, without understanding something of it. That's why I explain some things in Spanish. Now you're required to complete this exercise right here. Choose prepositions from the previous page to complete the sentences. So from the previous page, the prepositions I just taught you, where's Mary, where's Marcy? She's her office. Well, I'm gonna help you with this one. She's in a close. She's in her office. Now, since that's a public, public place, you can also say she's in her office or at her office because it's a public place. It's now in the lunchroom or at the lunchroom. Now, es un espacio dentro de. So we have to say she is in the lunch room. Okay. Now, you have to continue with, excuse me, where's the co concert hall? Go, mm, the street, it's, finish that up. Then once you finish that, you have to write a sentence using each of the prepositions with between, maybe for example, um, my house is between a pharmacy and a library. That can be a sentence, but you have to complete, I mean, write complete sentences, not just, uh, I don't know what is between, for example, some people used to do this, don't do that. Or uh, I would like to be in between. No, complete sentences with subjects, verbs, adjectives if possible. Now the last one right here is look at the pictures, describe the exact position of the following things. This is easy. The lamp is, I would say on the table and you have to continue with that. So that's it for today, kids. I hope you understood the lesson. Thank you for being with me in my class one more time. My recommendation is stay at home, be safe, and overall, do your homework, okay? And I'm gonna say goodbye now. Just give me a second. Here we go. Bye-bye, kids, in three, two, one.